Secretary of State will do what? Grant you a charter. Grant you a charter. And how long will your corporate charter last in Florida? Forever. Forever. As long as you pay your annual filing fees, which is which are minimal. Oh, and by the way, under Florida corporation law, what can you do with the corporation? Any legal business. Any legal business or anything le legally permissible. If you look at it, there are a certain number of ways that they say basically anything that is lawful or legally permissible. And apparently, you can do a whole lot of illegal things and get away with it, too. Right. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> British Petroleum is maybe the best example. But now I'm going to ask you, or in fact, I'll just tell you. In 1789, may I tell you what it took to actually create a corporation in, in the United States, in any state? First, you had to get a bill introduced in the lower house of the of House of Representatives of your state, and that bill had to pass by a majority. And then that bill had to go to the upper house of the state senate, and it had to pass by a majority. And then it went to the governor, and the governor had to be willing to sign it. You know, it's the functional equivalent of today what we would call a law. Has anybody besides me lobbied to try to get a law passed at a, at a state level? I see several hands go up. So somebody tell me, how hard is that to do? Right. There's a legal term of art for that. Real damn hard. Right? I mean, I, I was actually doing uh, this same presentation in Colorado, and a member of the Colorado State Legislature actually uh, he quipped from the crowd. He said, well, if it's a uh, bad law, it's actually real easy. The, the good laws are the hard ones. <laughs> but the point I'm making is the mechanics of just even creating a corporation in 1789 and for the first 75 years of this country was an incredibly high standard. Just the mechanics. And the substance. In order to create a corporation, you had to prove that there was a public need that was not being met by either existing private business that did not have the privilege of limited liability or by governmental action. So you had to prove a public need. And if you were given the privilege, not the right, but the privilege to incorporate, you would be issued a charter. And by the way, do you know how long your charter would typically last? 20 years. 5, 10 to 20 years. There was a distinct time period. And at the end of that time period, 5, 10, or 20 years, what happened to that corporate charter? It dissolved by its own terms. And 20 years was the longest anyone would do because that was the basic lifespan of a human being that would actually be able to engage in business, more or less. The idea was you should not be able to create any empathy that would outlive the incorporated, the human being that was actually, or the, human, the groups of human beings that were coming together to meet the public need. Oh, and by the way, if you were ever found to do anything other than the very specific public need that you said that you would do, do you know what happened to your corporate charter? Revoked. It could be revoked. And in fact, they were routinely revoked for simply going beyond the scope of what they had originally gotten a charter to do. Oh, and by the way, even if you were within your very limited time period, and even if you were doing the specific public thing that you had been granted the privilege of incorporation, if you were found to do anything that violated the public interest, did you know what happened to your corporate charter? It would be revoked! Folks, can we even imagine today a single transnational corporation that could exist if we simply imposed the political rules and legal rules that were in effect in the country for 75 years? The problem is not that there are not tools to hold these corporations accountable. The problem is that we do not have the political will to exercise and utilize the tools. That's the problem. And so, if it is true, and it is, that only a state government can create a charter, and since it is true that that charter can be used to hold the corporation accountable, and the corporation is supposed to be subordinate, and if it is true that that corporate charter describes the duties of what a corporation can or cannot do, and if it is true, as I will assert, that a corporation should only be allowed the privilege of limited liability if it is acting in the public interest, doesn't it just make sense that a corporation should be on this side of the line and be properly accountable to the workings of our wonderful democratic republic? And here's the kicker, folks. When the U.S. Supreme Court comes waltzing in and interprets our Constitution, even though the Constitution never once mentions the word corporation, says, oh no, we will now find the corporation in the Constitution. And we'll say that a corporation 
needs to be considered a person with rights under this framework. It perverts the entire premise. Corporate personhood is not just that, right? Corporate personhood is not just illogical, which it is. Corporate personhood is not just stupid, which it is. Corporate personhood is one of the linchpins for how the ruling elite have hijacked our democratic republic from us. How they have hijacked our political and economic processes. And as a lawyer, what particularly pisses me off is that they use our legal system to legalize it. You know, the courts are supposed to be where every citizen, every person, every human being can go for justice. And instead, we know as lawyers that actually the rules are tilted against us. And corporate constitutional right is one of the bedrock legal doctrines for how they've done that. And the second legal doctrine that is at play is an outrageous idea that the courts created out of whole cloth that money equals speech. And that somehow, look, money is property, right? And there are property rights that you have. But the expenditure of money is not the same thing as political speech. Money should be a, the expenditure of money should be able to be regulated. Because we should not allow the wealthy elite to spend unlimited amounts of money to pervert our electoral process. The elections are the infrastructure of our democratic republic. We should actually have appropriate democratic controls over the integrity of that process. So, I'm happy to tell you this horrible series of decisions. And these, they're not just laws, they're not just court cases, but they're legal doctrines. Corporate constitutional rights and money is speech. I'm happy to tell you that there is a movement taking place in this country. And that movement is called Move to Amend. A multiracial, multiethnic coalition of people from across this country. And I want to be clear what's so exciting to me about it is that this group of people are coming together across political ideologies. We've got Democrats and Republicans and Libertarians and Greens and no party affiliation and independents who are all saying, look, we may have disagreements as it relates to certain issues, and we can fight about those issues, but we've got to have first principles. We've actually got to understand that in the democratic republic, we the people rule, government is responsible to us, but government cannot violate personhood. Remember, personhood matters. And let me say that there are now hundreds of thousands of people carrying signs that say corporations are not persons. And that includes, may I say, for-profit corporations and not-for-profit corporations. Both are creations of the state. Both should be held democratically accountable. And that's the reason that principled conservatives and principled liberals and independents are coming together because Move to Amend is the only call that is actually calling it down the middle and says only human beings have inherent inalienable constitutional rights. Yeah. And when I was in Florida last year, folks, I was proud to tell you that we had 20,000 people participating in the Move to Amend Coalition. Today, as I travel Florida, I can tell you we have 155,000 people. When I came to Florida last year, I said, we've got five coming on, six local affiliates organizing. Today, there are 50 affiliates organized by Move to Amend. And Anita Stewart is helping and an organizer for Tampa Move to Amend. Anita Stewart. When I was in Florida last year, I said, we have plans to try to get city councils and county governments to pass resolutions in support of the Move to Amend proposition that corporations are not persons and money is not speech. And since that time, 20 cities have done so, including this week, Los Angeles, California, the second largest city in the United States of America, the city council voted and voted unanimously, unanimously, and they filled the city chambers and they filled the overflow room. And they had people lined up in the halls so they wanted to testify in support. And when the president of the city council said, is there anyone here who wants to speak in opposition? Not a single person was willing to stand up and say, yes, corporations have constitutional rights. <laughs> and when I was through Florida last year, folks, I told you that we were even going to try to elevate it even higher and that we had the idea of putting it on the ballot.
So not just city council people, but the voters could actually express their opinion. And since that time already, Madison, Wisconsin, Dane County, Wisconsin, Boulder, Colorado, Missoula, Montana, all have organized citizens' initiatives to put the issue on the ballot. Should the Constitution be amended to abolish corporate personhood and establish that money is not speech, and every place it's been on the ballot, it's won. In Boulder, it won by 74%. In Missoula, by 75%. In Madison, by 84%. And so I'm going to invite you, if you would like to join this movement, if you'd like to be part of this, my colleagues are going to pass around a sign-up petition. And I want to be clear, this petition is not one we're going to come on bended knee and ask people to please sign up. Right? We're not going to present it to elected officials on bended knee. This is an organizing petition. This is a petition that we're going to be using very specifically to contact you. To share this, your name with uh, Anita. We're going to actually try to get people involved. Yes, we're going to be asking for your input and advice, but we're also going to be letting you know what we're up to so you can get educated about the movement and get plugged into the movement. And lastly, I'll say this, folks. If you are interested, I am happy to tell you that on January 20th, the three-year anniversary of the outrageous Citizens United decision, we are taking a page from our sisters and brothers at Occupy Wall Street and we say it's time to occupy the courts. Yeah. The courts are the scene of the crime. And so we're going to be gathering at the United States Supreme Court and at every federal district court in this country, including in Tampa. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's, uh, yes, go ahead, shout it out. Okay, and now, if anybody would like to make a comment or ask a question, I'd ask you to just raise your hand and hold it up, and we'll do a quick stat. I saw your hand first. Sir, you're number one. Sir, you're number two. There was a hand over here. Man, you're number three. Sir, you'll be number four. John, five. Sir, six. Seven. So, numbers two through seven, this is called a stat. If you haven't seen this done before, you should do these in public meetings. Numbers two through seven. Relax. You will get to ask your question. You'll get to make your comment. Sacks are a wonderful thing as a way for us to share space. So now, two through seven, you can do what the rest of us are going to do and actually pay attention to number one. Uh, thrilling speech. And there's people who uh, love the Occupy movement. My friend John Russell here, he's running for Congress. And we were taking petitions at the door. So if anybody missed us and you want to help People who are challenging the status quo get on the ballot for Congress. Come see us before you leave tonight if you haven't already. Thank, Thank you so much for that. Let me actually say this. You know, I'm going to take off the move to amend hat. So now I'm just saying, I'm just saying, John Russell, do you believe that a corporation is a person with constitutional rights? Certainly not. Do you believe that money is speech? Not at all. Would you be willing to support a constitutional amendment to abolish corporate personhood and establish that money is not speech as a matter of the Constitution? Well, I think I said that in my earlier comments. I just want to make sure, John Russell, this is the kind of man we need in the United States Congress right here. Yes, All right. Let me, let me say this. Very quickly. You know, if money is speech, you know, your dollar is equal to my dollar, and my dollar is equal to Donald Trump's dollar. But the only problem is, you know, who has more dollars? has way more speech if a dollar is a dollar than anybody else. So how fair is that when the corporations are putting forward millions, unlimited sums of money for or against candidates or issues? It's not right, and we've got to stand up for this, and, and David knows that I, I'm going to stand up for this, and in my campaigning for move to amend and to give money out of politics and I've already had a plan on my website for a while on that and we'll go forward. With Thank you so much, John. Hey listen, before I go any further, I have to ask Anita. Anita, how much money did I charge you to come here today? Free. And uh, uh, to, to the uh, how much did I charge the Unitarian Church? Nothing. Nothing. 
And so, folks, you know what? If this were Texas, there wouldn't be a man without a hat on his head. What's wrong with you people? Anybody wear hats anymore? Are there any hats out there? Let's see a hat. There's a hat. Can I borrow that hat? Would you mind? And the reason I'm asking is, yes, it's true that I'm a lawyer. Yes, it's true that I'm an itinerant social justice uh, organizer. But I'm also a magician. You see this empty hat? I will turn it into money. That's right. It's an old-fashioned pass the hat. And as this hat comes around, if you're capable of writing a check, and I hope that some of you might be willing to, the organization, the nonprofit organization that never claims constitutional rights is Democracy Unlimited. And if you're willing to write a check but you don't actually have uh, your checkbook with you, you can take down the address P.O. Box 610 Eureka, California, 95501 and mail a check to us, and if anybody has a debit card or a credit card that you'd be willing to write a uh, donation on, uh, my girlfriend and colleague, Annette, is here with a handy-dandy little device. Is anybody willing to make a, a donation up there? Uh, so hold your hands up a second and get, get it back. You see there are uh, several. And so as this hat comes around, I'll say this. Folks, if you don't want to give any money, or the basket here, if you don't want to give any money, that's totally fine. But if you could make a contribution, we would be very grateful for it, and I promise you it will be put to good use. Number two. Who's number two? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah.